What's going on everybody? I'm Pastor Chris, the online pastor here at CL, and I just want to say thanks for checking out Covenant Love Church right here on YouTube. We've got a great message today, but do me a quick favor and subscribe to this channel. Why, you ask? So you can be one of the first to know when we have a new message up or a new video online that's ready for you to view. Today, we are in a new series called Real Christianity. In our society, we hear questions all the time like, Will we ever have harmony and peace in the world? Or something like, can we possibly get rid of the problems that are causing so much misery in today's world? Well, these are great questions, but the world's trying to figure them out themselves. They're trying to solve these problems out on their own. But here's the truth of the matter. None of this can be done without seeking God first. And with that, let's jump right into the message. Well, first of all, I was excited very much last night about how many people showed up uh, for prayer. It was an amazing turnout uh, for prayer. And I thank God for all of those of you who've signed up for the houses of prayer that on Saturday nights at 6 p.m. is when we have our corporate prayer time uh, that we come into intercession and intercession believing God for people to be saved, intercession uh, believing God to move in, in our, our, our city, our nation, uh, all the things that we, uh, we, we pray for. And the Lord reminded me this morning when I was thank, thanking Him for, for, for each and every person here that uh, is, is so in, immersed uh, in the things of God, and especially you understand how important prayer is. I want to read this scripture to you concerning this, actually before I get into my message, but this ties into the message. In 1 Peter, 1 Peter, amen, 1 Peter. 1 Peter, the fourth chapter, verse 7, Peter makes this statement. He said, but the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, because of seeing the day and the time that we are living in, the things that we know that the Bible declares that are coming upon this earth, he says, therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. Be serious and watchful in your prayers. Number one thing I want to share with you today is this. It is very important that you develop, if you haven't already, but you develop a lifestyle of prayer. Very important. And that you be serious about your prayers. And understanding that because you are a son and daughter of God, because you have an inheritance through Jesus Christ, God, and you're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, God hears your prayers. Okay, the Bible even talks about how God's eyes are upon the righteous and his ears are open to their prayers. God hears your prayers. It's very important that we, under, we understand that. And today, as I stand before you, I stand before you in the fear of the Lord. And the reason I say that is because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It's the beginning of wisdom. So I realize that if I want to bring the wisdom of God to us as a church body and to those that are watching us wherever they may be all over the world, that to bring the wisdom of God means that I honor, I respect, I listen to what God is saying to me. As we were, as we were uh, gone for a few days, we were, uh, our, our brother-in-law uh, rents a house and invites us to come down with their family uh, to, to spend some time just relaxing. But uh, when you have eight grandkids, no, what, what you need is I told him, I said, listen, we need to schedule two weeks. We need one week with the kids. And then we, we need another week in total 100% rehabilitation and recuperate, recouping. Amen. And so, and he agreed 100%. And uh, the, 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 the house that, that he rented was right next to the ocean. And there's something about going to the water. Because Jesus spent a lot of time on the water. Praise God. And so when we were there, the weather was not very nice. Matter of fact, the weather was horrible. And we had, we had a couple of days where it was, it was decent. But uh, the weather overall was very turbulent. And I remember the day that I went out to walk and to, to go pray. 
And as I was walking, there was like a 20 mile an hour wind blowing. And when you're walking in the sand against a 20 mile an hour wind, you know, that, that'll get you some a really good exercise pretty quick. And your calves will start talking to you. So will your thighs. And uh, so as, as I'm walking, I'm looking out on the ocean. The ocean is just totally turbulent. The wind is so strong that the waves are coming and, of course, it's just blowing the mist off of the waves and the waves are, are contrary and you could see the wind was so strong that waves were being blown, you know, one particular uh, direction. And I was, as I was walking, I heard this major sound like a bell and then I heard this flapping like crazy and I, and, and, and I looked up because I had my parker and everything on and I, I looked up and uh, they had red flags stationed at every place where there was a public ac- uh, access to the beach. These red flags were just going crazy and making all kinds of sounds and loud noises, you know, and it, it, it got your attention. And I looked at that, and as I began to look at that, knowing what God was putting in my heart to teach, the Lord began to speak to me concerning why He had given me this message. Because He said, the winds of adversity are upon this nation. He said, in the days coming, you will see great turbulence and turmoil. And He said, all of this is not... In the earth realm, it is first the battle and the fight and the war that's going on in the spiritual realm. He said, which then therefore will manifest itself in the earth realm. And he really began to to show me some things that that many of you know, some of you that are baby Christians, that, that you've just been born again, you may not know some of the things that I will share with you. But the Lord said, I want you to share these things because I want you to teach my people and so that they would have an understanding. They must lay a foundation for what is coming upon this earth. You must lay a foundation. And we know if we lay that foundation, no matter what happens, we will not be shaken. That is a promise from God. And so we're living in a day and a time that we're seeing everything that Jesus and the, 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 the apostles and even the prophets prophesied concerning the last days. We're seeing these things happen not just on occasion but we're seeing them happen in multiples. John the Apostle, when he was writing in 1 John, he made this statement. And we just read where, 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 uh, right here where, where Peter uh, made his statement. But the, 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 the end of all things is, is at hand. Now, Peter wrote that many, many years ago. John, in his apostle, in his, in his letter, he, he made this statement. He said, we're living in the very last hour. Now, if John wrote that, that he was so concerned that we were living in the last hour, where do you think we're living? And by the way, this is not a message of doom and gloom. This is actually a message of warning. Of warning to each and every one of us in the body of Christ and warning to those who are not living for God. You know, as I, was, as, as I was just thinking about this message again, uh, yesterday afternoon I, 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 I flipped on because I knew that, that uh, ESPN would be uh, speaking a little bit about the upcoming national championship uh, ball game that's coming up with Alabama and Clemson. And so I, I, I flipped it on. I wanted to see kind of what they were saying about it. And lo and behold, I saw something that I have not seen on when they're talking about the ball games and they got the commentators up there, you know, and then you see the people behind them. There was a sign. I don't know if any of y'all saw this. There was a sign being held by a student. The sign was this big and there was two signs. And the sign, and I'm sitting there knowing the message that God's given me, 
and, and I'm watching this, and all of a sudden, this sign comes up. The cameras are doing everything they can to get off the sign, but they can't because if they get off the sign, they've got to come off the commentators. So the sign says, are you ready for the return of Jesus? And then the next one said, you can't escape the wrath that's coming upon this earth. And I sat there and I said, okay, Lord, when I ask you for a sign, (laughs) glory to God. (laughs) That's pretty good. So this is, this is not a message of doom and gloom. This is a message, and here's what, here's what the Lord spoke to my heart. He said, I want you to bring my word to let the people know what is coming upon the earth and what is happening right now. Did you know in the last five years, that earthquakes have quadrupled? Did you know that right now we are having more volcanic eruptions than has ever been in the history of the earth? The one the other day was so violent that it literally moved the whole mountain. Jesus said, The generation that sees all of these things is the generation that will see the return of Jesus. And this is a time that every single one of us need to take inventory of our lives. Because Jesus said, when I come back, will I find faith? And he's not talking about, he said, will I find faith to be able to believe God for my finances? He said, will I find people walking with me, believing me, and will I find their lifestyles and their life a life of faith? Because what we're seeing in our world today is our world is becoming, is rapidly becoming like the societies of ancient times. See, Jesus told us that society would eventually digress to what it would digress to, and we're seeing and experiencing this here in our nation and around the world. If you brought your Bibles, and, I, and by the way, I want you to start bringing your Bibles. Okay, either your iPad, you know, your phone or whatever, I want you to start looking and seeing the Word of God that I am preaching and teaching for yourselves And you know, my notes are up there. You can do it. But at the same time, you should should be ready to take some notes because the Spirit of God will speak to you every single time the Word of God is being proclaimed and spoken. Let me ask you this. How many of you, when Hurricane Matthew was coming here, how many of you stayed tuned to the weather forecast? You kind of checked on everything. Most of us did. Majority of us did. And how many of you, when they said, okay, we need evacuation at certain times, uh, at certain places, people evacuated. But some people did not evacuate. And sometimes when, when major storms come, people think, you know, no big deal, I can ride this out, and they end up losing their lives. We're seeing all kinds of natural disasters that are happening like we've never happened, has never happened before. A phenomenon happened the other day. You might have, you, you might have just missed this, but an incredible uh, sequence of events uh, took place when for the first time, listen to this, for the first time, the majority, 80% to close to 90%, of the United States was all in clouds, covered by clouds. Weather folks are like, man, we're seeing things we've never seen before. The Bible even says that Jesus said that in the last days that men's hearts would fail because of the things that are coming upon the earth and the waters will be roaring. 
And believe me, we're living in a, in, a, in a geographical location that we see these things that are happening on our side. But they're happening everywhere. And Jesus again said, when these things happen, he said, you better be prepared. You better be ready because his return could be at any moment at any time. So Jesus, Jesus gave us indications of what the world would be like before he comes back. And I am a preacher and a pastor who fully believes in the rapture of the church. The reason I believe that is because in our daily Bible readings, we're reading through the Bible right now, we just went through Noah and, every, and, and, and Lot. And every time that you see uh, uh, Solomon and Gomorrah, you see the world uh, with floods and things like that, God always pulls the righteous out before. The reason I believe that we're not, we have not seen the, the fullness of the, uh, of the capacity uh, of the book of Revelation uh, here right now is because, number one, God said that he wishes that none would, 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 would be lost. He wishes that everybody would be saved. That's the reason God is long-suffering. That's the reason he's holding back the wrath that is coming upon this whole world because he's hoping that the church will continue to do what we're supposed to do and get the message of Jesus Christ out to each and every person. Because if a house was on fire, you'd be screaming to everybody in the house telling them to get out. You'd be warning them. When we were locked in to the weather, uh, to the guy with the weather forecast, and, and he was telling us and, and showing us all the things that were happening and all the currents and how the, the, the hurricanes were moving and what they were doing, everybody, we're all plastered. We're, we're listening. Why? Because he's giving us information so that we don't die. God has given us information in the Word of God so that we can understand. And here's what God spoke to my heart. He said, tell them the very things that you will say to them, let not their hearts be troubled. He said, I put it in my Word so that you will not be like the world and fall apart when all of this is going on and happening. You will be there to present the answer to each and every person. To let them know what the answer is. So Jesus said this. Luke 17, chapter verse 26 and 30. I'm going to give you a lot of scripture today. Can you all handle that? Okay. Luke 26, 30. When the Son of Man returns, it will be like it was in Noah's days. In those days, people enjoyed banquets and parties. And weddings right up to the time that Noah entered his, boat, entered his boat and the flood came and destroyed them all. In other words, notice that every day was just living, banquets, parties, people nonchalantly. But at the same time, listen to me very carefully. At the same time, the Bible tells us in, Hebrew, in Hebrews 11, chapter, verse 7, that Noah was a preacher of righteousness. He was a preacher. Can you imagine preaching? And, and, and notice this also, that, that Noah, uh, he was 500 years old when he started to build the ark. You can look that up in, in Genesis. And uh, when he was 600 years old, he finished. Took him 100 years, he and his family, 100 years to build that ark. 100 years. Now think about this. 100 years he preached and he told people about the flood that was coming. Not one person believed him. Not one. Only seven people were saved out of the whole world. Not one believed him. We're living in a day and a time right now that you're seeing that what what so many Christians want to hear right now is what will tickle their ears so they can live the life that they want to live but not be totally sold out to Jesus. 
And the Bible actually tells us in 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter, that, that there's coming a day that people will reject truth and sound doctrine. And he puffed for themselves teachers that will tell them what they want to hear. And they'll pack those places out. So he said, and the world will be as it was in the days of Lot. People went about their daily business, eating and drinking, buying and selling, farming and building, until the morning that Lot left Sodom. And then fire and burning sulfur rained down from heaven and destroyed them all. Yes, it will be business as usual right up to the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Now, the Bible tells us what the days of Noah were like. And the Bible says, Jesus said, in in the last days, this is exactly what it's going to be. This is how it's going to be, the days of Noah. In in Genesis 6, chapter verse 5 and 6, it says this. The Lord observed, this is the days of Noah. The The Lord observed the extent of of human wickedness on the earth, and he saw that everything they thought and imagined was consistently totally evil. That's a sobering statement. Listen to this. Everything they thought or imagined was consistently and totally evil, which means that Everything that you're, not everything, but so much that you're going to see on TV and you're going to see on the movies are going to be birthed out of that evil heart. It's going to be birthed out of a heart of immorality. It's going to be, a bur- it's going to be birthed out of a heart that is full of the sinful nature. And in this world... It's very important that you and I understand we have to protect ourselves. And we have to build a foundation. The Bible says in Hebrews 11, chapter verse 7, that, that uh, 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 Noah, being divinely warned by God, built an ark for the saving of his family. So you and I have got to think about not only us but we've got to think about children and young people that today are being deceived by what they're seeing and what they're hearing in such a way that it's beyond my comprehension just about everything that you watch today either has sex drugs drinking murder violence sorcery magic witchcraft it's all there. And, and today, there's so much of this that we've become numb to it. It's almost like we've been lulled to sleep in such a way that says, hell, you know, hey, everybody's doing it. Just let them. It's okay. It's no big deal. Don't be so religious. I'm not trying to be religious I'm not trying in any way, shape, or form to be legalistic. But what I am trying to do is, as a church, I'm trying to warn us. Because God warns us. If you read through what Jesus said, if you read through the apostles, if you read Paul, Peter, Jude, I mean, you read all of these, in there is warnings like crazy. And, And some of the warnings have to do with false teachers and false prophets that are going to come into the church. Saying all kinds of things. Preaching things that will tickle people's ears and, 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 and cause their flesh to say yes. But not growing in the spirit. Not really being true disciples. That's the reason that when, God, when, when, when the Lord spoke to me, he said, talk to them about real Christianity. What is real Christianity? So, he, so in the days of Noah, the Lord observed the extinct of human wickedness on the earth, and he saw everything that they thought and imagined was constantly and totally evil. So the Lord was sorry that he had ever made them and put them on the earth. It broke his heart. And then in Genesis 6, chapter verse 11, it says this. Listen to this. Now God saw that the earth had become corrupt and was filled with violence. Are we seeing violence in the world today? Like off the chart, crazy. 
How about the days of Lot? Genesis, the 19th chapter, verse 4 and 5. But before they retire, remember, remember that uh, God says, I've come down to see what's going on in Sodom and Gomorrah. And he said, it is, it's a, it, is, it is a wickedness that has reached to the heavens. So he said, I've come down to see this. And of course, Abraham found out that the angels, and one of them being the Lord, had come down and they were going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And so Abraham went into intercession for Lot. And he thought that he could literally talk God out of it. And so he got down to 10 people. He said, surely there are 10 people. Guess what? There were not 10 people. He said, if I find 10 righteous, I will not destroy it. He could not find 10 righteous people. It was just Lot and his family. Matter of fact, if you read the story... When Lot found out that the Sodom and Gomorrah was going to be destroyed, he went to his daughter's fiancés. The Bible says this. Went to them and told them that the city was getting ready to be destroyed to come with them out of it. And they laughed at him and made fun of him and thought he was joking. So a lot of times when you teach messages like this, people will laugh at you. People will mock you. People even, listen to this. I heard this guy the other day, the other night on TV, he was railing against people that were teaching on the return of Jesus. Standing in a pulpit. Oh, people have been talking about that for years and years and years. That's actually in the Bible. Are you listening to me? But before they, listen to this. Noah, the hearts of men and women were so evil that it broke God's heart. Lot, in Lot, Solomon, Gomorrah, that was a very progressive homosexual agenda. Now, God loves everybody and wants everybody to be saved, no matter what sin we're living in. He wants everybody to be saved. Amen? We need to be praying for everybody. We need to pray for all the lost. But this is a time that there was such a progressive homosexual agenda that it grieved God's heart. By the way, when somebody that it, it is in homosexuality that says, well, I was born like that, then you tell them, then they get reborn. Yeah. Hello? Get reborn. Get born again. Yeah. Right? And God will deliver you, whether it's heterosexual or homosexual. If it's heterosexual, you're living in fornication and, 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 and shacking up and doing all of these things. God, and, and by the way, that sin, homosexual sin, heterosexual, that's sin. No, nobody, and I'm not condemning anybody. I'm just literally telling you that that type of behavior and action grieves the Holy Spirit. It grieves God's heart. That is not the way that we as Christians are supposed to live. I had a young person just the other day ask this question. Her, her and her uh, husband asked me this question. He said, Pastor Al, we've really been pondering this in our hearts. Can a Christian really live a Christian life? Is it really possible to live this life that the Bible tells us about? And I said, if it was not possible, then God would have not put it in the Bible. If it was not possible. I said, first of all, the Bible says sin shall not have dominion over you. You make a choice whether you want to get into sin or not. 
But it shall not have dominion over you. It does not have dominion over you. The devil, regardless of what Flip Wilson says, the devil can't make you do nothing. Most of you have no idea who Flip Wilson is. But some of us that are around the age of 50 or whatever, we know exactly. <laughs> All right, now listen to this. It says, the days of Lot. This is amazing to me. Because Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah and the days of Lot, so it shall be at the coming of the Son of Man, the return of Jesus. So what were the days of Lot like? Genesis 19, verses 4 and 5. But before they retired for the night, all the men. Did you hear what I just said? This is, this is, this is the word of God. All of the men of Solomon, young and old, came from all over the city and surrounded the house, and they shouted to Lot, where are these men who came to spend the night with you? Bring them out to us so that we can have sex with them. How many people, how many men? All of the men in the city. I, I, I can't even, honestly, I can't wrap my brain around that. So, so, so Jesus said in these last days, there's going to be a very strong, progressive homosexual agenda. That's the reason you've got to protect your children. That's the reason you have got to, you have got to lay a foundation and protect your children. And you've got to protect yourself. You young folks that are sitting here listening to me. Listen, this stuff is everywhere. It's not just men with men. It's women with women too. This is a spirit that the enemy wants to filtrate our schools and all of society. And we may be living the, in the days that I can't stand here, which I will, lest I go to jail, but can't stand and speak the truth and tell them you're living in sin, you're living in darkness, and there is deliverance. There is the goodness of God. He will forgive you of all sin. He will deliver you and set you free. But we're living in a day and a time in the church that pastors do not want to address this or say anything about it and allow for, for the sake of numbers and monies and all kinds of stuff. And, 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 and we're allowing people just to, to, to live and, and to walk in lifestyles that, that they're going to cost them their lives. There's no more warnings today. There's only live your best life now. God wants you to be blessed. God, I, I'm a preacher of the, the, God will bless you and he will take care of you. And live in a life of faith. Because without faith it's impossible to please God. But at the same time, this whole Bible is about lifestyle. It is about our conduct. It's not about just material things that we get in our lives. It is about us living a life in such a way that people look at us and say, there's something different about you. There's something different about you. And we will not give up and we will not give in and we will not compromise no matter how much persecution, how, how much we're reproached or mocked or laughed at, just like Noah was. The Bible says Lot, his righteous soul was vexed in the middle of all of that. But look what happened to him because his daughters were caught up in it. And his wife was so caught up in the whole culture of, of, of Solomon and Gomorrah that she could not pull herself away from it and look back and turn into a pillar of salt. This world has strong magnets in it. And it wants to pull you in. And it wants to pull you away and out of your serving God with all of your heart. Loving Him. Obeying Him. 
Because people will make fun of you. People will laugh at you. People will mock at you. People will leave you alone so that you may be the only one there living the life. But don't forget, in living that life, the Holy Spirit will move wherever you are. The Holy Spirit will move on people's hearts and you will see people get saved. People get delivered. People get healed. And it is time for us not to pull back, not to be a counterfeit and compromise. But it is time for us to stand strong in the Holy Spirit and be the men and women of God and be the families of God that God called us to be. And stand for righteousness and stand for truth no matter what somebody says, no matter what it costs me. And we don't do it maliciously, and we don't do it legalistically. We do it with love because we love people. You and I were bound to go to hell if we died before we got saved. Somebody loved us enough to tell us about Jesus and witness to us. We can't close ourselves in and become self-righteous and just keep everything to ourselves. We're supposed to be the light of the world. We're supposed to be shining. We're supposed to be exercising and using the power of God. The Bible says in Ezekiel 16, 49 and 50, it says Solomon's sin were this. Sodom's sins were pride. It all starts with pride. Yeah. Isn't it amazing in 2 Timothy, the third chapter, when Paul discusses the last days, the first thing that he says is people be lovers of themselves, lovers of money. He said, Solomon's sins were pride, gluttony, and laziness. While the poor and needy suffered outside her door, she was proud and committed detestable sins, so I wiped her out, as you have seen. Today in our society, we hear the mounting questions. Will we ever have harmony and peace in the world, in our nation, even in our relationships? Is there any way... For us to be able to solve racial tensions and hatred and racism and animosities and divisions and violence and lewdness and drug and opioid crisis is everywhere. Immorality. We see marriages and home life falling apart. Can we possibly get rid of the problems and the perplexities that are tearing the life of society to pieces and causing so much misery in the world today? The world and much of Christianity is desperately trying to solve these problems. How? By holding political and economic and religious and climate conferences, hoping that together they can come up with the wisdom or the right political candidate to eradicate all the ills of the world, which basically sets the platform for the Antichrist to come. When we ourselves as a church are looking for political changes in such a way. Nothing wrong. We, we, thank God we live in a nation where we can vote. Amen. But let me tell you this. The answer is not in a political party. It is not in climate change. Because I'm going to tell you right now, you can have all the climate change conferences you want. You better read the Bible. Everything has been affected from our school systems to our homes to our churches. And all of this is being done without seeking God and receiving his answer, which is the absolute truth, Jesus Christ. In fact, the Bible tells us that before the return of Jesus, humanity will, number one, suppress God's truth. Number two, groups and organizations will meet secretly to overflow, overthrow the church of Jesus Christ. Number three, they will reject God's truth. Number four, they will mock all biblical teaching as fictitious and irrelevant. And in some churches, number five, will teach a doctrine of grace that rejects godliness and holiness and denounce the teaching of the return of Jesus Christ as being outdated and ridiculous. Number six, 
Number one, suppress God's truth. Romans 8, chapter, verses 18 through 32. For God in heaven unveils his holy anger, breaking forth against every form of sin, both toward ungodliness that lives in the hearts and evil actions. For the wickedness of humanity deliberately smothers the truth and keeps people from acknowledging the truth about God. This is where we are today. Everybody wants us to be tolerant of their lifestyle, but there's no room for us to say, be tolerant with what we say and let us preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. No way, no way. By the way, folks, listen, this is in the Bible. This is in the Bible that people are going to suppress the truth. They're suppressing it in, in, in the, in, thank God for the men and women that are in, in our school uh, systems that are the light there. But they're doing everything they can in the educational aspect, everything they can to suppress the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. There is more of a socialistic, communistic, and humanistic agenda that is being preached. When we live in a society that a woman who has just been elected to the Senate can stand up and call our president MF in public. Doesn't matter to me who the president. I'm looking at the office of the president of the United States of America. For us, wanting a president to, to, to fail is like you and I getting on an airline and wanting the pilot to fail. We all burn and crash. But this is what's moving in our society today. It says, for the wickedness of humanity deliberately smothers the truth and keeps people from acknowledging the truth about God. In other words, shut up about Jesus. Shut up about God. In reality, the truth of God is known instinctively. For God has embedded this knowledge inside of every human heart. Opposition to the truth cannot be excused on the basis of ignorance. I'm reading the Word of God, folks. Because from the creation of the world, the invisible qualities of God's nature has been made visible, such as His eternal power and, and transcendence. He has made His wonderful attributes easily perceived for, for, uh, for seeing the visible makes us understand the invisible. So then, this leaves everyone without excuse. Throughout human history, the fingerprints of God were upon them. Yet they refused to honor Him as God and even be thankful for His kindness. Instead, they entertained corrupt and foolish thoughts about what God was like. This left them with nothing but misguided hearts steeped in moral darkness. Although claiming to be super intelligence, intelligent, they were in fact shallow fools. Only a fool would trade the unfading splendor of the immortal God to worship the fading image of other humans and idols made to look like people and animals and birds and even creeping reptiles. This is why God lifted off his restraining hand and let them have full expression of their sinful and shameful desires. They were giving over to moral depravity, dishonoring their bodies by sexual perversion among themselves, all because they traded the truth of God for a lie. They worship and serve the things that God made rather than God who made all things. Glory and praises to him for eternity of, of eternities. Amen. For this reason, God gave them over to their own disgraceful, vile passions, inflamed with lust for one another. Men and women ignored the natural order and exchanged normal sexual relations for homosexuality. Women engaged in lesbian conduct and men committed shameful acts with men, receiving in themselves the due penalty of their deviation. And because... 
They thought that it was worthless to embrace the true knowledge of God. God gave them to a worthless mindset to break all rules of proper conduct. Their sinful lives became full of every kind of evil, wicked schemes, greed, and cruelty. Their hearts overflowed with jealous cravings and with conflict and strife, which drove them into hateful arguments and murder. They are deceitful liars of hostility, full of hostility. They are gossips who love to spread malicious slander. Within, and my God, do we see slander today? With inflated egos, they hurl hateful insults at God. Yet they are nothing more than arrogant boasters. They are rebels against their parents and totally immoral. All the young people in here, listen to me very carefully. There is a spirit of rebellion in this nation. Uh, to rebel against your parents, to rebel against authority. Do not allow yourself to get caught in this. Because if you do, you're going to have yourself a life that will be a life of total depravity, total emptiness, and you will see destruction. The Bible says that we are to obey our parents. Your parents are not doing things to you to try to keep you from having fun. They're trying to keep you from destroying your life. I mean, how many of you, when Hurricane Matthew was coming and the weatherman was standing up there and showing all the weather and, and, and showing the winds and everything, and you're just sitting there, oh, you just don't want me to go outside and have fun. No, he's trying to save your life. And that's the same thing with the Word of God. The Word of God is written to save our lives and to protect us. And the Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence because out of it comes the issues of life. Let me ask you this. Who is filling your heart? And what are you filling your heart with? Because out of the, uh, 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 the, uh, the, the heart, out of the, the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Who are you following today? Who are you allowing to influence you? Today, What is influencing you today that is literally causing your heart to become cold or becoming lukewarm when it comes to the things of God? Because Jesus said, before I return, the love of many, that's the word agape, the love for God, the love for His word, the love for assembling together the love for prayer, the love for people uh, that need to be saved, he said, it will grow cold. I found myself while we were away. I mean, I literally wept, and I got before God, and I said, God, don't let me. Lord, do not let me become lukewarm. Do not let our church become lukewarm. I said, Lord, I don't care if there's only three people there. I said, do not allow us to become lukewarm. Lord, I don't want to be lukewarm. I want to be on fire. And when you return and you come back, I want to be one that you say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. I want to hold on and embrace the truth. No matter what it costs me, I'll not deny it. I'll stand for it. And preach it and tell people. He, he said they're rebels against their parents and totally immoral. They are senseless, faithless, ruthless, heartless, and completely merciless. Although they are fully aware of God's law and the proper order and knowing that those who do all these things deserve to die, yet they still go headlong into darkness, encouraging others to do the same and applauding them when they do. The Bible says that all this sets up for the end times, for when the Antichrist, that person who will come on the world scene that will have the answers for everybody. He will be Satan incarnate. The Bible says in 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter, verse 9 and 12, the coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. And with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth. you got to love the truth. 
you got to love the truth. That means you got to love Jesus. You got to love God. You got to love the truth. It doesn't mean that we become mean. The people without Jesus become mean. <laughs> I was a very mean person without Jesus. And now I'm just the captain on the love boat. <laughs> It's the love of God. It's the love of God. It's the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. What is the goodness of God? That He will forgive me of all my sin. That He will fill me with His Spirit. But then there becomes a responsibility for me and you. A responsibility to live this life. When, when, Listen, we're coming at a day and a time right now that is not the most popular life to live. Matter of fact, we're coming at a day and a time that it will be the most mocked, reproached, made fun of, attacked, persecuted. And we've never seen that, that in the United States. But we're coming into those days. Matter of fact, the Bible even tells us, he says, and for this reason, listen, if you don't love the truth, listen to this. This is scary. And for this reason, let me say this. God loves everybody. But when you throw stuff up in his face and mock him and make fun of him, And we, listen to this, the Bible even says this, we deny the Lord Jesus Christ. Not that we stand up and say, I deny Jesus. It's not that. He said, we deny him by the way we live. We deny him by our behavior and conduct. Listen to this. He said, and for this reason, I don't want to be here. For this reason, God will send them a strong delusion that they should believe the lie. That they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Let me give you this one last, one last thing. Which this is happening, by the way, this is happening it's happening at such a pace And the capacity of it is amazing. How this is all being fulfilled. But there's something else that's happening. There are organizations in this world and in the United States. There are religions that hate Christianity. And will cut your head off. But there are organizations right now in the United States that are organizing, doing everything that they can to stop Christianity. I got news for them. You can't stop it. Because the gates of hell cannot prevail against the church. You're not going to stop it. Because we still have the keys of the kingdom. We still have the power of prayer. Let me, let me, let me, I got so much. I got so much. Listen to this. Number two was organizing the overthrow, overthrow of the church of Jesus Christ, especially in America. It's in the Bible. Do you know it's in the Bible? Listen to this. Psalms, the second chapter, verses one through eight. And I'll finish with this. This is just part. Why do the nations rage? And the people plot a vain thing. The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. Who is his anointed? His anointed is Jesus Christ. And his anointed is the church of Jesus Christ. The rulers rulers take counsel together. Oh, by the way, it's interesting to look up the word rulers because one of the definitions there are judges. Judges. And the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. And we are his anointed, 
Jesus is the anointed one. We are his anointed ones also. Saying, watch this, here's what they're saying. Let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens shall laugh. Because you're coming against God. And the Bible says you don't touch God's anointed. The Lord shall hold them in derision. And then he shall speak to them in his wrath. And distress them in his deep pleasure. Yet I have set my king on my holy mountain in Zion. That's Jesus Christ. I will declare the decree. The Lord has said to me, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. Ask of me. That's the reason that we pray like we pray. You know what we're praying for? We're praying for the lost. God, give us the lost. Father, give us the lost. But now listen to me very carefully. Because I didn't get all the way to where I want to get to. But I got a whole year to do it. Here's what the Bible tells us. The Bible says that you and I must lay a strong foundation. A foundation on His Word. For our families, our children, for everything. You've got to lay a foundation of your own life at home. You can't just come to Sunday morning and get taught just on Sunday morning. You've got to read the Word of God for yourself. Listen to me very carefully. You've got to read the Word of God for yourself. That's the reason that if you go up on our webpage, there is a daily Bible reading that I've put together for us as a church to read through the Bible in one year. And I've put notes and all kinds of things that are there so that you can gain the wisdom and understanding we're all reading together. There is a reason in the book of Acts that it talks about that they, they centered themselves around the teaching of the doctrines, teaching of the Word of God with the apostles. And the Bible says that they, 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 they were in fellowship with one another. Ladies and gentlemen, it's important that you understand who you're in fellowship with. Because if you're in fellowship with people that are not walking with Jesus... They're going to pull you down. The Bible is very clear in 1 Corinthians 15, Bad company corrupts good character. You've got to make a decision that you love people. You love where you, people that, you, that, that, that where, where you work. You love people in your school. You love the people that are there. And hopefully you're praying for them to be saved. Because the Holy Spirit is now here. And what is His job here? It's to lead us and teach us in truth, but his job is to convict the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. And he will, when you start praying for the people at your work and at school and other places, the Holy Spirit will convict them. And the Bible also says they're convicted by your lifestyle. But if your lifestyle is no different than their lifestyle, that means you're a counterfeit. You're a counterfeit. It means that you're not, real, you're not the real thing, the real deal. And what the people need to see today is Jesus 100%. They don't need to see 50% of Jesus in your life. They need to see Jesus 100% in our lives, 100%. They need to see us and when we go to the marketplace, when we're in the schoolroom, wherever we are in our vocation and work, we're doing it with integrity. That They're seeing Jesus in us. And when they say, why won't you run with us? Why won't you go with us? Why won't you do this? Why don't you do that? Why aren't you cussing anymore? Just because you're in the military doesn't mean you have to cuss. The Bible even says don't let anything that any foul words or any foul speech come out of our mouths. The Bible says that. Why? Because when you're not a cusser, when you're not running around and, and getting drunk and you're, you're not acting the way you used to act before you were saved, it makes a statement to everybody something different about you. And what people have got to see today, they have got to see that we are difference makers. 
And they've got to see the difference in our life. And that difference is 100% Jesus. And it's not a boring life. It's a life full of joy and fulfillment. Oh, yeah, it's tough. We have all kinds of tough things that happen. We have problems. We have all kinds of stuff. But people see us in the midst of our storms to have peace because we pray. They don't see us cursing the storm. They don't, they don't hear the negativity running out of my, my mouth like everybody else because, no, because we have the answer. The answer is Jesus. The answer is the Word of God. And we're the, listen, do you realize that we're the only people in the earth that have the answer to all of society's ills? It is Jesus. It is not conferences. It, it, is, it is not political. It is not socialistic. It's not communistic, humanistic. It is Jesus. It is not religion. It is Jesus. This relationship with Jesus. Period. That's, that's what it is. That's, it's just Jesus. Do I have anybody in here that wants to follow Jesus? Do I have anybody in here that wants to be difference makers? Do I have anybody that wants to be world changers and history makers? Do I have anybody in here can stand up and say, Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is the center of it all. Thanks again for joining us here on YouTube. I believe that God had something special just for you today. And maybe you were listening to the message and thought of someone who also needs to hear it then please feel free as always to use this video as a ministry tool and share it with them today. And if you ever need more information about CL, be sure to check out our website. It's super easy to remember, mycl.church. And if you're ever in town, we would love for you to come to church and say hey. But if you're not in Fayetteville, you can always check out our church online, which happens every Sunday morning at 8.30 and 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I look forward to seeing you there. Thanks again for joining us. Until next time, I'm Pastor Chris.